is the vowel plot that I made in the first part of this tutorial, a type A plot of just one speaker. We're now going to be looking at type B and type C plots. Type B is extremely fast. Type B is just a plot where we show selected vowels. Not all of them, because that can quickly get too complicated. Just show the ones that we're interested in. So as an example, I thought we would just pick goose and foot for this speaker. The way to do that is that we simply filter the vowels we're seeing. So we'll click on our uh, main variable here that we have the marks for. We have marks for vowels. We'll click on this in the marks panel and click on filter and we're only going to pick out the vowels that we want like i said um i'll just go with foot and goose all the other ones are deselected and that's an okay for that so now um the scope of the plot has narrowed down to just the two parts that we need here, goose and foot. That's it. You can do this in any vowel plot. If you go uh, into the marks panel, click on the vowel variable, and it should be the one that has the, uh, the, the color marks. Click on that variable uh, on its menu and, you know, set up your filter to show only those vowels that you're interested in. For our type C plot, um, let me briefly uh, address the topic of normalization. I'll do that as I start a new sheet for this new plot. Type C is going to be where we compare two speakers. And if you remember how I imported the data, I have one male speaker and one female speaker. Um, if they're uh, if one has a higher voice than the other, as is the case here, the female speaker has a high voice and the male speaker has a low voice type. If that is the case, um, it's not possible to simply compare the Hertz values, like the raw measurements for their formants, because the higher voice will altogether have its um, formants in a higher segment of the two axes of the F1 and F2. So formants are easily 100 hertz higher for the high voice than they are for the low voice. We need to normalize these values so that basically find a mathematical way of mapping these hertz values onto the same scale so that they become comparable. Fortunately, that's already done for us in the Darla output. Darla sends us the output with uh, one column of normalized F1 values and another column of normali normalized F2 values. So in our step two now, we need to um, first uh, make sure that the... So in step two now, we're ensuring that all the data for both of the speakers is included. Right now, we're only including the one speaker. Let's include both. I'm going to go to data source. And in data source, I'm going to form a new union. Um, in Tableau, they use union as a verb. We're going to union these two sheets for Gina and Mike. Gina is the sheet that's currently loaded and available. Um, I'll just remove this sheet to get a blank slate here for my data and double click on new union and I'm going to union two sheets for two speakers. Uh, Gina is the raw formant sheet that I got from Darla. Not Gina.n, just Gina, that's what I named it, and Mike is the raw sheet I got for Mike. And I drag them into this little union panel and say OK. So here now, up top, it now says union. I can verify that I don't just have Gina here under name, but also Mike at the bottom of the union sheet. There's Mike. So I have them both in there. Tableau tells me that I have 275 rows. Previously, I just had uh, something under 200. So now uh, both speakers are included. With this data in place, I can now go back to my sheet two where I'm making the new plot. We are uh, going to use 
slightly different columns now. Previously, when we had only one speaker, we had no need for normalized data. That's when we used the columns F2 and F1. Now we need normalized data and we're going to use F2, Lobanov normed, unscale, uh, and F1, Lobanov normed. And remember the F1 column, whichever F1 column we're using, needs to be dragged to the rows field that puts it in the position of the y-axis. And the F2 column needs to be dragged to the columns field that puts it in the position of the x-axis. And the other standard move we need to perform is that we don't want formants to be added up. We don't need a sum of the formants for each vowel. What we need is the average measure. So measure, change that to average. Same thing for F1, go to measure, change that to average. And finally, another standard move. Remember, we needed to right click and edit the axis reverse the axis, right click on the X axis as well, edit it, reverse. We can draw our vowel marks again. Here's my vowel column and as before I'm gonna draw, now I'm gonna drag the vowel column here, the name of the vowel column, gonna drag this onto the color marks field um, as in type A. Here now I have a mark for each vowel, uh, which is the average for both speakers. This is a compromise between both speakers. To get a little more clarity, I'm also going to drag vowel on label. Fortunately, Tableau has remembered the aliases that I entered for vowels. I did that in sheet one for my type A plot here in the second sheet on the same project. The aliases are remembered. That is a wonderful thing. Um, so now we really came here because we wanted to compare two speakers. But like I said, what we're getting is averages for the two speakers. Uh, I'll show you two different ways of comparing two speakers. Version one is that we're making two separate panels for the two speakers and we can present them side by side. In order to do that, we're going to draw on the name column. Name is where we have Gina and Mike for every vowel token. That's basically the speaker value here. And I'm going to drag the name column up here to columns and that will have Tableau make two different panels. You see it's labeled Gina on the left, Mike on the right. And so now that'll give us a chance to eyeball the differences between their two systems. One thing that jumps out at me is how the trap is fairly far front for Gina, not so far front and actually quite raised for Mike. I think that's very interesting. I also think that the goose vowel is well more advanced for Gina than it is for Mike. But if I wanted to see this more clearly, if I wanted to make even tighter comparisons, I could show the two speakers in the same panel and just use different symbols for both speakers. So this is now version two. For version two, I would take the name column out of uh, my uh, macro assignment up here, drag it out and back over there. Uh, and instead drag name onto one of the marks here. I want to distinguish the speakers by shape. So name, drag it onto shape. And I'm going to get different symbols drawn. Here in my legend I can see Gina gets the circles, Mike gets the squares. So that's kind of cool. Here's a direct comparison. Here's a direct comparison where we see how Gina's goose vowel is farther to the front. Um, it is a bit of a mess though. There's so many vowels here. So this is now a good uh, opportunity to really narrow down on the vowels that I'm interested in. So as before, I'll click on the vowel column where the circles, the colored circles are drawn. Click on there, add a filter, and I'll just focus on um, the foot vowel and the goose vowel. And now I can really compare goose for Gina, goose for Mike, foot for Mike, foot for Gina. What this tells me is that foot is really um, out of these two vowel classes that are both high back, foot is really where the difference sits. So in discussing accent differences, um, I would be well advised to keep the foot vowel in consideration. So to finalize this plot, 
like any plot, you would want to pretty up the labels here. I double clicked on that axis. I'm going to just say, how about normalized F2? That's more legible than what there was previously. Gonna do the same for F1, normalized F1. Gonna give the whole plot a better title. Okay, that's a better, more informative title for the plot. And as before in the type A plot tutorial, if we want to save this plot as a graphic, uh, we're going to click on worksheet in the, in the menu at the top of the screen. Worksheet, export image, and then you choose whether you need the legend or not. Uh, in this case, I would recommend using the legend for the shape. We do need to know which shape, the circle or the square, stands for Gina and which one stands for Mike. So shape legend, uh, we are using the color legend uh, we're not using. And so I'm just going to save this and I can name it. It's going to be saved as a PNG. And there we go.